another video of the same, another recording of the same PPT. Okay. I welcome you all to the discussion on, on transgenic animals. Okay. So what is a transgenic animal in general? So typically, I'll just give an example. Now we have so many types of organisms that are uh, made transgenic. But mouse is a popular model. Mouse, of course, there are many, many organisms now transgenic, but experimental models usually we use mice because it is easy. It is a mammal to start with. So that is the closest to small mammal that we can manipulate. Its lifespan is about two years and the sexual fertility within four to six weeks. So it's uh, easy. The generation time is short. And um, yeah, so it also has same similar to us, X and Y chromosomes for the sex and 19 autosomes. So it is a favorite uh, mouse model, uh, the model organism for transgenics. First thing, what is a transgenic? It is a mutant animal carrying experimentally introduced foreign genetic elements in all the cells, including the germplasm. What it means is, first thing, this foreign genetic element is called as the transgene, the gene that we are taking from exogenous sources and putting into a species or an organism, genotype, genome of an organism. And an organism has two things. One is the somatoplasm and the germplasm. Germplasm is a small part that is the one that generates the gametes and will allow the formation of a new organism. So a, an animal that is developed or man, uh, genetically manipulated by introducing a gene and by end, all the cells, including the germline, have those that gene, genome with the manipulation is called a transgenic animal, transgenic organisms, you can say. So there are three important steps that we have to discuss. We will focus on it, a little bit of molecular genetics and a little bit of stem cell biology, both together, uh, we will discuss in general. So these are the four or the important steps. The, for our sake, we will try to understand the gene construct. As such, we do not have transgenic animals in your um, in your syllabus directly, but we have humanized minds, or um, which we have to discuss as a part of unit four. So I thought this will be a good introduction to humanized mice, and then you can probably understand that better. Okay, so there are there is two steps important is uh, or three steps you can say this is gene manipulation, this is genome manipulation or the cell manipulation, and here we have the embryo manipulation, and then we finally get a transgenic animal. There are three levels of manipulation you have to we have to think about it. So there are two broad categories or methods that are followed. One is direct microinjection method, and the other one is called as engineered stem cell method. And these become, uh, these are important steps. There are several techniques like DNA microinjection, cell transfer, nuclear transfer. We have discussed all these things before. We know about retroviral infection, how we can use viruses for genetic reprogramming, for example like that. But what we will focus today is on the, the core concept of these two methods. And this is what is our most interest uh, with directly related to our syllabus in a way, or the course, engineered stem cell method. First, these two methods are in, in a way very simple. The top one, this is the uh, first method that is the engineered embryonic stem cell method. We take DNA, we manipulate the embryonic stem cells, we get a cell, right? We get cells with the positive clones, and then we put it into an blastocyst. 
then we are going to get a chimera and that is what we will discuss further so this one is manipulation is happening on the embryonic stem cells and then we are trying to generate a complete organism the method two here depicted is direct dna transfer we take a fertilized egg we have two pronuclei the male and the female pronuclei and into the male pronuclei we can put in the desired gene directly and the desired gene can grow into a complete organism uh, sorry the desired gene can get integrated and then it will when we implant in the uh, surrogate mother it can give rise to a pup and that is a transgenic animal if the desired gene got integrated into the genome otherwise not so when we perform um, these genetic manipulations, there are three or, uh, three types we have to think of. One of it is gain of function. We call it as transgenesis. That is also called as knock-in. That means you are putting in a gene. If you're putting in a gene, you call it as knock-in and transgenesis. The other way is knockout, where we are deleting a gene if you are deleting a gene that is present in the genome then we call that uh, approach as knockout somebody is saying i knocked out the gene from that uh, organism it, which means that you deleted the gene the other one is called is shut down the expression the gene is present as such we are not deleting it but we are shutting down the expression of it that is called as knockdown you may want to remember it if you are going into core biology and you're going to read papers on that or work. Knock in means putting in a gene, knock out, deleting a gene, knock down is repression of expression. In terms of expression, we can also do it in two ways temporal and spatial. They are simple terms. The meaning is in which stage of development you want to uh, express or repress that is temporal temporally uh, controlling right it is time based at which stage in which time that is what you're saying space is about in which part of the body say do you want the gene to be expressed or repressed in the tail or in the, in the on the skin which tissue you want to restrict the expression uh, that is what temporal and spatial means. I will directly, uh, there are, uh, I will go into the method, but before going, there are, these are some of the methods how we can put the gene, gene into the cells. The, one of the popular ones is electroporation. If you are using viral vectors, we can call them as trans, um, transfection. And sometimes we can also use uh, cell fusion and DNA microinjection, as we just discussed a uh, little while ago. We'll discuss now that. So DNA microinjection works with a lot of devices, like like we discussed about a micro manipulator, right? When we are talking about pronuclear transfer or somatic cell nuclear transfer, it is carried out under a microscope fitted with videography and a lot of things to with a suction pipette like this to hold the egg and a needle that can when we make a hole and we can pierce through it and deliver the dna into the male pronucleus typically that's what is done so they will allow fertilization to happen and prior to these two pronuclear fusing the DNA is injected into it. So this is called as the micro manipulator. And there are a lot of videos on YouTube. You can go and watch uh, if you want to see how this micro injection happens, right? So that is that is a simple procedure. Simple, I said, in terms of the number of steps, because we will see how complicated it can be when we discuss the later one. But it is technically demanding these fine needles, 
are um, they may break very often you need a lot of expertise to perform these uh, to operate this and perform these actions or these steps so this is how it usually looks like this is the suction pipette here it will there will be negative pressure here because of which uh, the egg is held close to it and this is the zona pellucida so egg is easier to micro manipulate you cannot manipulate uh, other cells just like that because the there are no animal cells with cell walls and the only cell wall like thing okay if you can count it as zona pellucida is a tough uh, polysaccharide or proteinaceous coating that is present so the egg is safe and it is held in position and the micro injection will be they'll make a hole in the zona pellucida and then the injection the micro needle is put in and the dna is delivered here so once we um we do that we these eggs these eggs will these two pronuclei will fuse and form a nucleus and that is put into pseudo pregnant female I mean, it is transplanted or implanted into the uterus of a pseudo-pregnant female. And then when the pups come, we will get a transgenic mice. If DNA has integrated, if the DNA that we have put in here, if it got integrated, we'll get transgenic mice, otherwise not. So we have to perform um, several experiments, molecular level experiments like southern blotting and other things to determine if it is a transgenic or not. It's the same thing. Uh, this is what I was talking about. You can perform PCR uh, specific to the gene that you might have put in, or that can determine the using primers that can determine the size or the fragment, whether it is formed or not. You can determine and see which ones of these are transgenic and which ones are not transgenic. OK. So the procedure of manipulating the embryos and uh, getting a live organism is not as simple as what we said. So we will just go through the production of transgenic mice. We will just see the steps involved. So they superovulate a donor female, and they take a normal male, and they will allow copulation to happen. So they will form, uh, they will collect the fertilized oocytes or actually they will take the eggs from the, the female, uh, male from the male, you can take the sperm and then do in vitro fertilization and then collect the fertilized oocytes. That is also, that is the more often done there. Then the fertilized oocyte is injected with the gene, uh, with the DNA, that is the gene of uh, interest. And that is this embryo. Now this fertilized manipulated egg is now put into a pseudo-pregnant female. What do you mean by pseudo-pregnant female? If we take a female and just put in these eggs, they hormonally and physiologically, the, the mouse is not ready to conceive and hold on to those uh, eggs. So what they do is to prime the individual for holding on, they would take the recipient female and allow it to mate with a vasectomized male. So mating between them will happen and the mouse will respond physiologically and hormonally to be, to be ready to be pregnant. But then it did not get any sperm from the male because the male was vasectomized. So that is physiological preparation of the pseudo, that is what it means to be pseudo pregnant pregnant but it's not actually but we'll make it uh, we'll put in these manipulated embryos and because of which it will become pregnant and it will give rise to transgenic pups and now we will verify these pups uh, and ensure that they, we can we are able to screen for which one is transgenic and which one is not transgenic so the engineered embryonic stem cell method, the other one, 
that I think uh, it's important that we also learn about it a little. And that's why I'm taking this. I'm covering this topic right now. So we engineered embryonic stem cell method as the, as the title indicates. We are going to manipulate embryonic stem cells. And from there, we have to get a transgenic animal. So what are embryonic stem cells? They are from the ICM. We get a morula, morula 16 cells, and then a blastocyst. And from here, we take the ICM out, and then we get embryonic stem cells, which are grown on feeder layers. So before going, I would also want to know, uh, I would also want to discuss a little bit about what is meant by positive selection and negative selection. I hope I discussed. If I, if I didn't, it will be, if I already did, it will be a good re review of it. Positive selection and negative selection. First, the word selection means what we are picking, OK? Whatever we are picking, we, are, we have, say, 10 apples, and you are taking the best out of it and you're discarding the rest. That means you're selecting the best apple out of the lot. Positive selection is something like, if you put in a gene X, OK, and you have so many cells in which you have, you, you have five cells and to which you provided gene X, but only one of it got, you provide um selection criteria or conditions such that those with x will grow and the others will not grow that means here gene x is conferring an advantage for it to grow in these conditions that is called as positive selection presence of gene gets selected okay that is positive selection Say, for example, I have similar setup and I'm giving gene Y. And say two of these cells got gene Y. Negative selection as opposed to positive selection will be. Let's me repeat what is positive selection in terms of gene here. Presence of gene X is allowing the survival or, the, or is getting selected here. So it is positive selection presence. Negative selection is, say, if these three cells are Y, which did not get Y, and those cells with Y died out. That means the presence of Y is killing the cells, is not allowing the selection. So this is called as negative selection. OK? Let's go through, and then you will, with a, we will see some example, which will uh, better our understanding. So here is um, a gene construct. How do we do? As we discussed, say, for example, my goal is I have a gene. I have this, I have this genetic locus. Say this is A, and this is B, and, and this is, oh, OK. So we had two genes, A and B. We have, this is the genome, normal one. And I want to put in between A and B, I want to put gene X like this. That is a transgene because we're going to put this gene X from somewhere else into this genome. That is the transgene here. So how can we achieve this is what we are discussing. Say if you take a genome or a nucleus and it has all the DNA and you put in gene X, are we sure it is going to go and integrate only between A and B? No. Integration will be random. Anywhere it can get uh, integrated. So we want to target this gene between A and B. How can we do that is a question. So we can use homologous recombination for it. From the last course, we have also genetic engineering. We discussed um, in depth what is meant by homologous recombination and what is meant by 
um, site specific recombination. We are going to use those here. Homologous recombination is the combination that occurs between two similar gene sequences, right? So, what we do is we have to put in gene X here and sequence of A here and sequence of B. The orange ones that are depicted are homologous regions. I'm trying to construct a gene, um, a gene um, construct which will allow me to target gene X between A and B. That's my goal. So if I take several cells and say, we don't know what is the outcome or the consequence of gene X, for example, or assume that it is not readily detectable. So if I took 10 cells and gave them this gene X and say two of them have gotten, how can I separate these two from the other eight? Right? I don't want, I want to eliminate I want I should be able to recognize which ones are I want to get select these cells and I don't want these cells. Usually we will be talking in 10 to the power six, like that's numbers. Here I'm taking just 10 cells. So we should be able to select them. That is why we need to use neomycin uh, resistance gene. So we put Say, for example, um, this homologous recombination will happen between these orange ones. And the region that is present here will also get incorporated as shown in this case. We have neomycin phosphotransferase or neomycin resistance gene here. Okay. Instead, there is also a possibility. Although we, we put in a whole DNA, let me just say what is there. This is for homologous region, B homologous region. We have neomycin resistance gene for positive selection. And we have on the outside these boundaries, we have thymidine kinase. Okay, excuse me. Uh, micro serine is all. Am I audible? I don't know what happened. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, computer had a problem. Okay, where was I? Yes. So I uh, will just you. Uh, is it getting recorded here? Yes. Okay, just in case if there are if there is any issue that we might not be able to understand. I will post some videos I said that you can 
to review whatever we are discussing. I'm unable to use some of the features for some reason. OK. So we have, I will just try to describe this once again. Uh, OK, give me a minute. 